Yeah, hello everyone, welcome back to Mog's Workshop, and this is my hand. It's an okay sort of hand, but we want to make it into an extraordinary sort of hand. So first things first, we'll trace around it and get a cardboard hand. Here we go. What we're going to do, you see, is make some gauntlets. But not gauntlets like we did before with a 3D printer, no. We're going to make them out of paper. No, not really, we're going to make them out of metal. But we need to start with paper, because metal is very difficult to work with, whereas paper is super easy. Okay, there's our design, doesn't it look weird? Okay, let's start. What do we need? We need a sharpie and some scissors. Well, this is just going to be a breeze, isn't it? Oh, the hard stuff will come later, don't worry about that. Oh, the metal is not easy, but this is nice stuff. Lovely little bits of light, fluffy paper, and we're going to go round and we're going to make a pattern for our gauntlet. Because we don't want it to be too big or too small, we need it to fit our hands specifically, not anyone else's hands, unless we're making gloves for someone else. No, we want these gloves for ourselves, because we are selfish. Look at this. Oh, yes, these are the finger pieces. See how they fit over? And don't forget, they're going to be bent around the fingers, so we need to make sure that there's a little bit of extra wiggle room so when we're smacking the metal around, they will go around our fingers and encapsulate them nicely. After all, this is supposed to be armour, so we can't have great big gaps in our fingers, nor can we have the metal too close together, because then you won't be able to bend your fingers at all. That won't be good. Boo! Ooh, I tell you what is good, though. Look at all these lovely bits of paper. This is our pattern, all ready and raring to go. Easy to do, just a little bit of trial and error and back and forth, and you're raring to get to the next stage. So, what's the next stage? Well, now we're going to move on to some cardboard. And where is the cardboard? Oh. Well, the cardboard's arrived, so what are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to replicate all of the bits by cutting them out into cardboard, and we're going to attach them to a glove. But what glove? Where's a glove? I need a glove. There's a glove. Oh. And yeah, now we've selected our glove of choice, let's get blasting away with all of our cardboard. First thing we need to do is make sure that it all fits, and then we're going to glue it on. Because although we've done the pattern in paper, and then we've done the pattern in cardboard, until it's actually on a glove, on a real 3D hand, existing in a 3D world, we won't know if it fits precisely. Let's check this out. Here's the back piece, and yes, it seems okay. But what we've learned is that we need to cut out a little bit from the bottom here to make sure that when you bend your wrist, it doesn't interfere with it and stop you being able to have a full range of motion. Likewise with the side there. Here we go, here's our modifications, and that should fit much more comfortably on the back of our hand. And of course we'll mirror that on the other hand too. Each of these pieces for the fingers will need tweaking as well, and this is a process that'll go on until you're happy that everything fits. But how do we attach these to the glove? Well, the first thing we're going to do is give them a little bend, but unlike the back piece, we're going to attach these to a strip of material first. On the real glove, it'll be a piece of leather, but here we're going to use Jolly Ribbon. And it attaches very smartly with a few little blibble blobbles of hot glue. And what we'll do now is we'll take this over to the finger and we'll attach that there as well, and doing it to all the other fingers, but not with our hand in the glove, because it will burn. Ah, here we go, it's all done, the glove is assembled and looking rather nifty. Let's see if it all articulates. Yes, all seems to work. Hmm, what we need to do now is check that the little knuckle pieces will fit in place. Yes, these will go over there. We won't attach these now with glue because we need to do something rather drastic. We need to take our snazzy little cardboard glove and we need to do something which is rather appalling. We need to rip it to bits. Here we go, unfortunately, yes. Why are we doing this? Well, because we've made all kinds of trimmings and tweaks, so all of our little cardboard parts are now different from what they were when we originally put them on. Therefore we need them back, yes we need them desperately because what we're going to do next is trace them onto metal. Well we might make neater versions of them first onto cardboard. Unfortunately our glove is looking a little bit worse for wear. I wonder if there's any life left in this fellow. Oh look, we did trace them out again. Yes, reason is that the previous bits were all a little bent and crunched and creased, and we really need nice straight bits in order to put them onto the metal and get a pen round them without it going wibbly wobbly. And here is our metal. Doesn't it look nice? Oh look, the glove's back. Yes, it's still going. It's going to forge its way through adversity, and it's going to see this project out. First thing we need to do is take all of our stuff here, all of our little cardboard pattern parts, and we're going to trace round them. Ooh, look, brass. Yes, there's brass in here too. We're going to go steel and brass for this gauntlet. It's going to look very jazzy. We've just got to make sure that we don't use up too much material, so as we draw around these, we'll try and put them nice and close. Oh, here we go. What a lovely 
collage of parts. This is the steel, and then this is the brass. Okay, let's get on. Here's our tin snips. We'll unclip these here. Now, these require a little bit of force, but not too much. Just make sure you don't get steel that's outrageously thick, or you'll be here all day. It's good to get the metal nice and tight in the jaws. Give it a little squeeze, and there we go. It actually cuts it pretty easily. Now, once you've got this metal snipped away, you're going to keep on cutting and kind of peeling the metal away as you go. In this regard, it is not that much different from cutting paper. But if you cut it like this and use the very end of the snips, oh, then you'll get a horrible little kind of burr at the end. And it's very difficult to keep snipping in a straight line when you've got these lumps in the way. You'll end up with all kinds of wavery cuts, and we don't want that. So we try and do it in a nice smooth line. Okay, how easy is this going to be? Drum roll and we're off. We'll do one piece at a time, we'll just kind of cut them out roughly, and then we'll go along the line. We'll make sure that there's plenty of space for the snippers to snip and do their work. We don't have to be outrageously neat and close to the line, because what we're going to do afterwards, of course, is make sure that they're filed and sanded, so we can just get pretty close to it. There, we'll grind it down to make sure it's perfect later. Okay, moving on, what have we got now? Well, we've got these brass parts, and you know what? I looked at these and I thought, hmm, these look like peanuts, I don't like them. So let's change them and make them more like diamonds. That looks a little bit more nifty, doesn't it? So in order to do that, what we're going to do here is just draw on our new shape and snip away all of the excess material, leaving enough behind so when we do take it over to the grinding and the sanding part of our project, we'll be able to make this into a really nice shape. And here it is. Snip, snip, snip. The brass is a bit more easy to cut than the steel, but either way, you're going to end up with outrageously strong hand muscles that'll enable you to crush anyone in a handshaking competition. And and there's all the little extra bits there that we'll hopefully be able to grind out and look snazzy. Hmm, let's see what happens. Oh, what have we created? Yes, we've created a tremendous supply of shrapnel. No, we haven't. We've created all kinds of roughly cut out bits of metal ready for the gauntlet to be assembled. But let's not get ahead of ourselves assembled, I say. No, I say. I'm saying lots of things to myself here because we've got much more distance to travel on this journey. We need to start shaping. And in order to do that, we've got our cardboard part for reference, and we've got our metal parts, and what we're going to do is we're going to grind the edges of these. Because obviously using the tin snips, you're going to get all kinds of little sharp edges, and that's no fun, especially with gauntlets. You don't want to scratch your nose and then remove it from your face in a big bloodied mess. That won't be fun, and it will make you stand out at parties in the kind of way that you don't really want to. Okay, first things first, let's take our lovely shiny piece of metal, actually it's a little bit Matt. We'll try and make it shinier later. And we'll take it over to the Dremel, which is locked into a nice little stand here because it's an awful lot easier to move the material to the Dremel than take the Dremel to the material. Grindstones and sandpaper? Oh, not that bit though. That's bald as all heckins. We'll need fresh sandpaper for this job. Right, what's next? What speed do we set this sucker to? Let's go and have a look, shall we? Ah, the handy chart. Here we go. 25,000 RPM for that and 35,000 RPM for this. Excellent stuff. Always handy to keep this around. Here we go. Grindy, grindy. Lots of sparks. I do enjoy this bit. Of course, make sure to hold on to the piece of metal very firmly, otherwise it'll ping off and embed itself into your face. Oh, that's a good point. Probably also make sure you're wearing gloves and absolutely, definitely, and not even probably, gloves and goggles. We would like to keep our face without bits of metal in it. Next thing, let's move on. What have we got? We've got a piece of metal that is now exactly the same shape and size as our cardboard pattern. Excellent stuff, but we probably don't need all of these little letters on it. Also, all kinds of scratches that have accumulated through all the rest of the processes. So we will scrape away with some lovely sandpaper. Not too strong, about 200 grit, and we'll take this down and make sure it's nice and smooth. But we'll keep the numbers on the back, of course. Oh, the brass parts. Look at that. A pile of little brass diamonds ready to go. Now we want to do these in a neat way, so let's tape them all up like this. Make sure we can do them all in one go and they're all therefore the same size. This should be nifty. Let's see if it works. Back to the workshop. And here we go, we go to our jaws, our little magnetic jaws we've fitted to our vise, and this should make sure that we're not going to damage the brass. 
in they go, and we're going to file in nice up and down motions there with a little bit of a diagonal direction, and we're going to reduce it in size until we get right all the way down to the black line. And a bonus, look, we create all this sort of brass sand. That's nice, we can make a little shiny beach. Excellent job for us now, because this Dremel wheel just happens to be exactly the right size for our little scallops. Look at that, absolutely perfect. Excellent, excellent. And we'll just make sure on this big chunk of sandpaper that we haven't got any kind of burrs that are going to scratch us later. Now, I like shiny things as much as the next magpie, but these are a bit too shiny, so dulling them down with a bit of sandpaper looks spot on. Especially when we make sure that we sand them all in the same direction as each other, then everything will match nicely. If you want to make absolutely sure that absolutely everything is absolutely perfect, then this is just the right stage to spend lots of time. But for me, I'm going to make these gauntlets look a little bit worn, a little bit lived in. We're going to celebrate every single dent and scrape. In fact, we're going to add more as we go along. That'll make them look much more natural rather than something we just stick in a glass case and never touch. Thank you for watching this video, I very much appreciate it. Please like and subscribe and get ready for the next part of these weird glovey gauntlety gauntlet gloves out of shiny shiny armour. In the meantime, please have a lovely time inside the time zone in which you spend your time. I will see you soon on Mog's Workshop.